take a moment and imagine a school where students are thriving, where the staff is inspired, and where the parents are engaged. If you're an aspiring principal or a current principal and you're looking to transform your school and turn it into a success story, then you found yourself in the right place today because in today's video, we're gonna give you three insider tips that are gonna help transform your school and transform you into a rock star principal. So grab a pen, a piece of paper, and get ready to take some notes because we're starting right now. Hey everybody, Gordon Amerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. And on this channel, we leverage my experience from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further, faster in your educational leadership and your educational journey. If this is your first time with us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any of our newest episodes. All right, so today's video is about being a principal. And it's about being a good principal. So I'm gonna start this video off differently because I'm gonna tell you a story about how I was a terrible, terrible first year principal. I am lucky that I still had a job after the end of my first year. I didn't listen. I didn't take good direction. I didn't have good counsel. I didn't have good support. No, that's not true. That's actually not, that's actually not fair because I did have good support. But I thought I knew it all. And here's what I can tell you. As a first year principal, as a fifth year principal, you don't know it all. We're never, ever, ever gonna know it all. But what I did learn in that first year, when I took those bumps, those bruises, uh, I learned how to be a better leader. And then I took the strategies that we're gonna lay out in this video and I incorporated them over the next several years and turned our school along with the staff and along with the faculty and along with the school community into a great school. And so it's okay to fail at the beginning. It's okay to be vulnerable and tell people or at least, or at least be honest with people that you're still learning, you're still growing, you're open to ideas, you're open to listening, and you're open to getting better. So in my first year as a high school principal, I thought I knew it all, and I didn't. I mean, some of the staff members who were on faculty at the school were my teachers when I was in high school, and now I was their principal. And for a moment, for several months, quite frankly, I forgot the fact that there was a lot of wisdom and knowledge to be learned and gained from them. And so it took taking some hard lumps and learning some hard lessons in that first year before I really got a sense for what I needed to be and who I needed to be to be a more effective and focused and charismatic and inspirational leader. Because when you're leading a school and when you are a principal, a lot of your work is focused on being able to inspire people, being able to connect with people. As principals, we don't do a lot of busy work. What we do is a lot of thought work. We do a lot of communicating work. We do a lot of influencing work. So we're gonna spend a lot of time in today's video giving you some strategies that will help you really internalize how to be an effective principal and how to go from here to here by utilizing some best practices and by utilizing some and by utilizing some excellent strategies that will help build your leadership capacity but also build a strong foundation for you to be able to move your school academically to be able to move student achievement to be able to move collaborative uh, and professional practice of your teachers, to be able to build some leverage within your school community to be able to do things and make meaningful change and have meaningful impact in and around the school community. So thinking about being an effective principal, thinking about being an effective leader, we're gonna talk about three strategies that are gonna help you in that endeavor. So buckle up because we're going to start with lesson number one. 
All right, so let's jump into tip number one. Tip number one is if you want to be a successful principal and you want to be able to move your school, the very first thing you have to be able to do is you have to be able to communicate effectively and build relationships. And these two go together. Communication is one of the most difficult things to do. And you go, well, it shouldn't be because communication is simply talking. Sometimes talking is one of the most challenging, most difficult things. But more importantly, you have to be able to talk. You have to be able to communicate verbally with folks as a principal without question. But I would actually, I would actually tell you the more important component of being an effective principal in the communication area is to be able to listen. Be able to listen to all of the different stakeholders who have input, who have feedback, who have some skin in the game in and around the school. Let's talk about who those stakeholders are that you want to be effectively communicating with. And it's going to start with listening and hearing them. First stakeholder group, most important, in my opinion, students. And sometimes they're forgotten because the normal checklist you're going to think about is you're going to think about the staff. You're going to think about the faculty. You're going to think about the parents. But student voice is critically important. What we don't realize sometimes is that the absolute best solutions, the best ideas, and the absolute breakthrough ideas that will take and transform the school into places and things that they we never could imagine do not come from the adults, but they rather they come from the kids. They come from our scholars, they come from our students because they spend disproportionate amounts of time on campus. They grow up there, they value it, they love being there, and they're deeply invested. And so one of the very, very first stakeholder groups you're gonna wanna always, always consider and listen to as you're building a good, strong communications strategy and pipeline are gonna be your students. Maximizing and implementing student voice is one of the best practices that I could recommend to you. Secondarily, obviously it's gonna be your parents, your faculty, and your staff. You wanna have good, effective ways of creating two-way communication with them because they have feedback, they have input, they have insights. And hearing those pieces, hearing that feedback, hearing those insights, is gonna help you strategically guide and direct your different grade levels, your different content departments, your various areas of within operations across the campus. So listening to the feedback, taking that feedback and internalizing it and then thinking about what are the ways that I can then turn around and utilize the information I've now received to be a better leader, to be more focused, to be more intentional about the things that I will do to support the campus. This is a critical aspect of, of our leadership, of being able to think through and react and respond effectively to the feedback that we're, that we're getting. So that's listening. The, the other group not to forget about that you're gonna want to make sure you have a good, effective amount of listening with is gonna be your district office. Getting direction, receiving direction from the district office to make sure that the, the, the path that you're taking, the direction you're moving is in alignment with your superintendent, in alignment with your school board, in alignment with your school community writ large, it's gonna be critically important to your overall and your long-term success. So again, thinking about those constituencies, your scholars, student voice, critically important, staff, faculty, parents, critically important, as well as your district office staff. Thinking about what are effective ways to receive that feedback, be able to receive that communication and listen, actively listen, actively internalize what those pieces of feedback are that are coming to you, and then thinking about ways that you can effectively implement that in an intentional way. And the second part of this communication aspect would be, are you effective in re-communicating back out to folks? Do you have good, solid strategies to communicate orally, writing-wise, 
Do you have different ways of making sure that you can connect with your folks and are using different modalities to communicate? Because communication comes in lots of different ways. Again, we can write a memo. We can send a letter. We can record a video. We could send a tweet. We could make an Instagram reel. We could do a LinkedIn post. We could do any number of different ways to effectively communicate our, our message. And the best principles find out what are the best ways that my school community and all the little stakeholders that we've already talked about, what's the best way that they like to receive and communicate information. When we know and are able to do that, and then we can meet them and communicate in ways that they're gonna receive that information, then we have now an effective way of two-way dialogue. I've created strong systems to listen, and now I've got strong systems to re-communicate that information back out. All of this for the express purpose, again, in this key strategy, number one, which is communication and relationship building. If I have strong listening and strong communication skills, then I'm gonna be able to build authentic and meaningful relationships because I'm gonna build trust, because I'm gonna build empathy, because I'm gonna build shared vision, shared understanding of where we wanna go, right? So when we can create these systems of strong and effective communication, both listening and speaking, listening and writing, listening and recording, whatever those ways are, then it is expressly to help build relationships across all of those stakeholders because you will need all of those stakeholders in order to be effective. In order to be a successful principal, you will need all those stakeholders. This is one of the biggest challenges that I had when I was a first year principal and it was why I had such a rocky year. Is why I was, I was such a terrible first year principal because I thought in my mind, I had it all figured out. I didn't need anybody else's insight because I was already the principal, I already knew. I already had the job and I already knew and I was already going to take the school where it needed to go. And what I failed to understand is that no school can run by one single person. Lots of able hands and smart people can lift a school and move it in a positive direction. So don't be afraid to be vulnerable and establish really effective ways to get feedback and to say to people, I don't have it all figured out and that is okay, but I need you. I'm inviting you to be a part of this discussion. I'm inviting you to be a part of the strategic direction of the school. So I'm here to listen. And then once I've listened and I think I have a good understanding, I'm gonna send some information back out to you to check for understanding to make sure I got it right. And if I got it right, then I know we're gonna move forward because you're gonna let me know. And so that's gonna build that, that feedback loop where you have good communication and you're building a trustworthy relationship with your, with your staff, your students, your community, and also your district office. Effective communication and relationship building, strategy number one. All right, so as we move into strategy number two, before we move there, let me ask you a question and answer this for me in the comments below. What do you think is the most critical quality or skill necessary to be a successful principal? Share that with us in the comments below because your insights and your thoughts are gonna help build the community's understanding and build the community's knowledge around the successful qualities that are needed for a principal. So what's that number one critical quality that you think all principals should have? Share that with us in the comments below. We're gonna to move to strategy number two. Okay, strategy number two. Every successful principal has got to be a strong leader and have strategic vision. All of our staffs, in my experience, all of our staff, faculty, staff, community, they are looking for us to provide guidance and to provide direction. And once we've established what that guidance and that direction is, then people feel like they have purpose because now they know where they're going. And now they can choose how they will add value, build capacity, and help to execute and realize whatever that vision is. So we've gotta be strong leaders. We've gotta be strong in our convictions around what we believe, what we aspire to have happen for and around our students and around our staff and around our school. We have to be bold enough to go out and find effective practice. We have to be bold enough to go out and find 
where people are doing it better than us in that moment, but that we can build and grow towards. But being a strong leader is being vulnerable enough to say, all right, yes, we're going to do that. And no, we're not going to do that. Because part of being a strong leader and having that vision is developing clarity around what should be the priority and what should not be the priority. If we prioritize everything, then we prioritize nothing. And that's critically important because there's always going to be a series of com com um, conflicting uh, and bombarding priorities. Do we do more of this? Do we do more of that? If you run on a high school, uh, and I was fortunate enough to be a high school principal, you have all the competing variables of all the different departments, what the English department needs, what the math department needs, what the uh, visual and performing arts department needs, what the physical education part department needs, what does food and nutrition services, what does the, the food and nutrition services kitchen need, what does the special education department need, but all these things will be spinning on different plates for you. And what will happen is if you fail to be a strong leader and communicate clearly and effectively to the various constituencies across your campus, and it's not just for, and make no mistake, I mean, no disrespect to our elementary or middle school leaders, because the same thing happens in elementary and middle school as well. There are varying constituencies who have needs. And without us casting the vision and saying what we are going to prioritize and what we are going to put our time, effort, energy, and money into, then everybody will want to share what their priorities are. But here's what I would invite you to think about. Once you share what your priorities are and you make it devastatingly clear that this is the direction that you want to go in. Now, let me step back for just a second because... When do you make the bold declaration about what you will do and where you will go and what the vision is? Do you just cook that up on your own in a vacuum with no insights, no input? Of course not. You're actually going to loop back to strategy one, which is you've listened and you've listened and you've gathered feedback and you've talked to students and you've talked to staff and you've talked to parents, and you've talked to the district office, and you've gotten all of this feedback, you've talked to your leadership team, you've talked to your executive team, your assistant principal team, your head counselor, your athletic director, your uh, teacher on special assignment, your teaching and learning coach, your instructional coordinator, you've talked to all these different folks, and you've taken all of this feedback, and you've put it all into your calculation. And through that communication strategy, that listening and feedback loop, as well as building these trusting relationships, now at some point you can come out and you can make a bold declaration as a leader, a strong, dedicated, committed, and focused leader that this is where we're going. We're going in this direction. And here's why we're going in this direction. We're back to... We're building a strong vision, we're being a strong leader, and we're using the fact that we've built a strong communication feedback loop and we've built a strong series of relationships that allow us to make bold declarations. And once we declare, and once we make it very, very crystal clear about where you wanna go and what you wanna be and what you want the school to be, then you get to invite all of your staff to bring you ideas, initiatives, and resources and things that are aligned to your vision. Being a strong leader and having that vision allows you to use one of the most powerful words in the English language. Most powerful word in the English language? You all know it. We all know it. I'll tell you a secret. It's no. You get the power to say the word no. But let's, let me give you a couple of, of thoughts about the word no. 
when you say no in a vacuum without having listened, without having communicated a feedback loop, without having involved your stakeholders, without having given context as to where you want to go and what your priorities are, then it will seem like you are cold and callous as a leader. But imagine no with the following rider or caveat added onto it. Teacher comes to you, staff member comes to you and says, I'd like to do, and I'd like the, I'd like the sixth grade team to be able to buy this curriculum for, uh, st for uh, STEM related activities. So valid request. Everybody wants to do STEM related initiatives. If you say no, how is that going to be received? Because nobody likes to receive a no. That's just honest and that's just truthful. But if you said no, and it went something like, well, unfortunately, we're not going to prioritize that right now because our focus as a dual immersion school, our focus as a dual immersion magnet really leads us to want to focus more of our professional development dollars, more of our resources and materials around bilingual and biliteracy initiatives. Do you have any bilingual biliteracy initiatives that you want me to consider? So I've said no, but I've given a qualified no that's nested back into these are all the things that we're focused on. And the reason I'm being bold and very direct around how I can make that no statement is because of all of the previous work that was done. Now I'm in a, now I'm in a position of strength as a leader. But if I don't know what our priorities are and I haven't cast that vision because I haven't done the necessary work to be able to boldly declare what that is as a strong leader, then I'm going to have a little bit more of a challenge. And then people are going to feel disconnected. They're going to feel disenfranchised. They're going to feel that they don't have a voice and that they don't have a place within your organization. And that may not be true. You may want them to have that, but it may be the way they perceive it. So all the more important to be able to make that bold declaration as a strong leader with vision because you've done that preceding work around making sure that you're communicating and you're listening and you're building relationships. So strategy number two, again, is be a strong leader. Boldly declare that vision. And once you have declared that vision, keep a laser-like focus on it. Why are we going here? And then re recycle that message over and over and over. When you're in your leadership team meetings, remind people, Here's the priority. Here's what we're focused on and here's why. When you're in your, uh, you're in your convocation at the beginning of the school year, you're opening up the school year and you're, re you're revisiting the focus and the intention of what the school is going to be driving towards. Recycle and regurgitate that message over and over and over. When you have strong message discipline, when you have strong message discipline, people will know and understand where you're going and they will support it. People want to be led. I want to be led. I want to be led by my school board. I want my school board to give me clear direction and clear parameters. Our classroom teachers, our assistant principals, our counselors, our school, our program facilitators, our uh, nutrition services managers, our noon duty aides, our proctors. Everybody is craving for direction because everybody wants to be on a team. The vast majority of people just want to be on a team. They want to be a part of something that is bigger than themselves. And they look at leaders to provide clear vision and strong leadership that they can feel confident, comfortable, and excited about following. So when you have the opportunity as a principal, if you want to go from mid-level to high tier principal, be strong in your leadership and cast a very, very, very vivid and direct vision that people can get excited to be around. All right, so as we move into strategy number three, hey, if you're getting value out of this video, don't forget to smash the like button as well as subscribe to the channel. We wanna to continue to give you more and more value and more valuable content 
as we help you move further faster in your educational leadership journey. All right, smash that like button and, and subscribe to the channel. All right, let's move into strategy number three, data-driven decision-making. So it's not, it's not as big and as um, kind of nebulous out there as the first two strategies, but we live in a world where we have a ton of data. And if we have all of this access to information that can help us create better outcomes for kids and create better efficiencies and better performance management and better uh, opportunities to be productive and to be effective for our staff, we want to use data to drive decisions. The educational leadership landscape is all about data and being responsive and reactive to that data. Formative and summative. Formative meaning let's take some of these short-term pieces of information and let's use those to drive some of our strategic work so that way our summative data, that end of the year data, comes out where we expect it to, where we need it to, to show that we've moved students, that we've helped students be better, do better, achieve more. But data-driven decision-making is all about making sure that we're committed to doing the work necessary to be able to make good, informed, and effective decisions. So what is the data that we need? How are we looking at it together? How are we creating intentional time, space, and energy around making sure that we have a professional practice, we have a professional learning community where people come together, we look at data together, we develop a shared understanding. And as principals, we have to lead this conversation. One of the most important components of being an effective principal is to be an effective learner. In fact, one of the most important things for us to be as a principal is to be the lead learner. We have to thirst for more knowledge, more information, and more growth than anybody else on the campus. Because our job is to set the environment, create the conditions for all of the other things to happen. So we've got to be well-read, well-versed, well-prepared to be able to effectively service our faculty, to be able to effectively service our students. And a part of that is using and understanding how the data is going to drive and inform those decisions. Because our kids deserve the best. If you're going to be a successful principal who is driving performance, who is growing student achievement, you are focused on being a good uh, consumer of the information. You're focused on being a good uh, steward of the information. And you're focused on being a good disseminator of the information, making sure you get the right data into the right hands of the right people so that way they can make effective decisions within their departments, within their grade levels, within their area of the campus. But it's your job to make sure that you are creating the environment and the conditions for that data analysis and that data-driven decision-making to actually happen and to occur. This is more than anything, I think, from a standpoint of high levels of transparency, high levels of accountability, and how fast information can move in and around our schools and in and around our districts nowadays. The height of being accountable and the height, the height of being transparent is being able to understand, make meaning of the data and then be able to make effective decisions and then be a strong leader who stays focused on the priority, who stays focused on the main thing, and then is able to communicate that and build long lasting relationships. So all three of these pieces they intimately tie together because the data drives the vision, which drives your ability to be a strong, confident leader. And the ability to cast the vision is your ability to listen and your ability to communicate it back out and your ability to be a trustworthy and effective leader. But these things all work together. All three of these strategies, they work together. And when you can master bringing all three of these things together, you're going to be one heck of a principal. If you have parts of these practices in place already, that's wonderful. You're, you're, you're a step ahead. 
And if you want to get more and you want to do more with these strategies, then continue to invest time and effort and energy and continue to grow with us in this community because we've got more and more information to help you be an effective leader, to be an effective principal. So if you want to know more about what the functions are of an effective school principal, you can check out this video. And if you want to continue to grow with us, check the description below, check the information below. We'll have more information for you about support, resources, things that will help you grow your leadership that much faster and help you be that much more effective for kids. So check this video out. It's really, really good. It's going to help you move further along in your journey. And we're going to see you on our next one. Be well, everyone. We'll talk soon. Thanks.